Sodium is the predominant electrolyte in the extracellular fluid. Normal sodium value ranges from about 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter. Sodium is essential for regulating and controlling water balance, maintaining excitability, and for conduction between the nerve and muscle tissues. If there is an imbalance in this electrolyte and it is not treated immediately, the result might be a coma, seizure, or respiratory distress. What happens when there is a sodium imbalance? Hyponatremia, which is a low sodium imbalance. This can happen as a result of gaining of water or loss of sodium rich fluids that result in sodium levels less than 135 milliequivalents per liter. This causes water to move from the extracellular fluid into the intracellular fluid, causing cells to swell or cellular edema. In cases of severe hyponatremia, where sodium levels are less than 110 milliequivalents per liter, this is considered a medical emergency and it can lead to permanent neurological damage causes causes of hyponatremia can be an abnormal GI loss such as vomiting nasogastric suctioning diarrhea tap water enemas or gastrointestinal obstructions renal losses can also cause it due to diuretics kidney disease and adrenal insufficiency skin losses can also cause it from excessive sweating burns or wounds it can also be caused by excessive oral intake of water it can also be caused by SIADH which is the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone which causes excessive excretion of ADH or antidiuretic hormone. Edematous states can also cause it, including heart failure, cirrhosis of the liver, and nephrotic syndrome. It can also be caused by excessive hypotonic IV fluids or inadequate sodium intake. Signs and symptoms can include lethargy, confusion, apprehension, muscle twitching, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, headache, seizure, and coma. Some laboratory results to look out for would be a serum sodium that is less than 135 milliequivalents per liter. Treatment and nursing management. Nurses want to assess the patient's vital signs, monitor fluid intake and output, monitor laboratory data, assess the client closely if administering hypertonic saline solutions, encourage food and fluid intake high in sodium if permitted, and limit the water intake as indicated. Hypernatremia. With hypernatremia, fluid moves out of the cells into the extracellular fluid. As a result, cells can become dehydrated. Causes. Causes for this can be water deprivation, excessive sodium intake, which could be either dietary or IV, excessive sodium retention, such as in renal failure, Cushing syndrome, aldosteronism, and some medications, such as glucocorticosteroids. Other causes could be fluid losses, fever, diaphoresis, burns, respiratory infection, diabetes insipidus, hyperglycemia, and watery diarrhea. Age-related changes, specifically decreased Increased total body water content and inadequate fluid could also cause this. Signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms of hypernatremia can include thirst, dry, sticky mucous membranes, tongue that is red, dry, and swollen, weakness, fatigue, restlessness, a decreased level of consciousness, disorientation, and convulsions. Laboratory results can show a sodium that is greater than 145 milliequivalents per liter. Nursing management. Nurses should monitor the fluid intake and output, monitor for behavioral changes, monitor laboratory findings, encourage fluids as ordered, monitor diet as ordered by restricting salts and foods that are high in sodium. Now let's look at some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. Question number one. The nurse notes that the following clients are at risk for hyponatremia, except a a five-year-old child with SIADH, B, a 30-year-old pregnant woman with an oxytocin infusion, C, a 68-year-old male with CHF, and D, a 22-year-old female with diabetes insipidus. So the question is asking us to identify clients that would be at risk for developing hyponatremia. In the first option, option A, a five-year-old child with SIADH, as we mentioned before, patients with SIADH are definitely at risk for hyponatremia. SIADH is when the pituitary gland releases too much antidiuretic hormone, causing the body to hold on to 
water. This can cause dilution, and it also causes the serum sodium levels to get dangerously low. And the second option, option B, a 30-year-old pregnant woman on an oxytocin infusion, one of the potential side effects of oxytocin is that it can stimulate the kidneys to excrete sodium. Thus, it can potentially cause hyponatremia. And option C, a 60-year-old male with congestive heart failure, and patients with CHF, they have an inability to excrete the extra fluid that is in their system due to the heart's inability to pump properly, which can cause fluid overload and therefore dilution. Option D, the client with diabetes insipidus is actually more prone to excess sodium or hypernatremia rather than hyponatremia. All the other clients are prone to hyponatremia due to the loss of sodium with either the use of diuretic medications or adrenal insufficiency, making D the correct option. Question number two. A client with Addison's disease is presenting shallow respirations, agitation, tremors, and hyperactive deep tendon reflexes. Which of the following laboratory results would justify these signs and symptoms? A, a chloride of 63 milliequivalents per liter. B, a sodium of 155 milliequivalents per liter. C, a magnesium of 2. Or D, a calcium of 9.5. This question can be incredibly challenging because you may have thought you learned a ton about the importance of sodium in the body and the signs and symptoms if your sodium level gets high or low. And then you get a question like this, which presents a disease process which you may have never heard of. That is why I say you have to do as many questions as you possibly can. This is the best way to expose yourself to all different aspects of the disease. So Addison's disease is where the adrenal glands do not produce enough of the hormone cortisol and aldosterone. These are two very important hormones in the body. Cortisol is responsible for the regulation of most proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. It also helps regulate the cardiovascular system. And aldosterone helps the kidneys regulate salt and water. When aldosterone is low, this will cause the kidneys to lose sodium and chloride. When the aldosterone level is critically low, it can cause all types of complications, including metabolic acidosis. Signs and symptoms of metabolic acidosis include rapid and shallow breathing, confusion, fatigue, and agitation. Also, remember that some of the signs and symptoms of low sodium include muscle twitches. So now that you know a little bit about Addison's disease, it's time to test your ability to recognize normal versus abnormal lab values. So let's take a look at these answer options one by one. In option A, a chloride of 63 milliequivalents per liter, well, a normal chloride is between 95 and 110, depending on your facility. So a level of 63 is low. In option B, a sodium of 155, well, a normal sodium ranges between 135 and 145, so a level of 55 is high. In option C, a magnesium of 2, well, a normal magnesium is about 1.5 to 2, so this would be considered normal. And finally, option D, a calcium level of 9.5. Well, normal total calcium level ranges from about 8.4 to 10.2, so this level is also normal. So the only level that makes sense and would be correct Correct would be option A, a chloride of 63, making this the correct and final answer. Question number three. A client with hypertension is advised by his cardiologist to follow the DASH diet. The nurse knows that the DASH diet is an acronym for which of the following? A, decreased amounts of sodium for hypertension. B, dietary allowances of sodium for hypertension. C, diet for Americans to stop hypertension. Or D, dietary approaches to stop hypertension. Hypertension. One of the first lines of defenses to consider which would help control hypertension is diet modification. The primary way to do this is to lower the sodium intake. A DASH diet focuses on healthy eating, but also on adding different non-salty ways to add flavor to food. The exact meaning of the acronym DASH is the dietary approach to stop hypertension, making D the correct and final answer option. In the next video, we're going to look at the electrolyte potassium.